Zaguan, Tunisia is a small town about 60 kilometers south of Tunis. Here, on the edge of the Dorsal Mountains, stand the remains of a monumental fountain that marked the beginning of Africa's greatest Roman aqueduct. In the mid-2nd century, the leading citizens of Carthage, the most important city in the western provinces after Rome itself, decided to build an aqueduct fed by Zagwan's mountain springs. When complete, this aqueduct extended 132 kilometers, making it one of the longest anywhere in the Roman world. At the aqueduct's source in Zagwan, a semicircular portico was built. It was richly decorated with Corinthian columns, a mosaic floor, and statues. At its center, directly over the springs, was a small temple dedicated to the local nymphs. The spring water emerged into a pool shaped like a figure eight, which served as a settling basin for the water before it began the long journey to Carthage. Like most Roman aqueducts, the Zagwan aqueduct was subterranean for most of its length. Here, just below the Nymphaeum, a short segment has been excavated. The channel was relatively small, about 90 centimeters wide by 130 centimeters high, just large enough for maintenance workers to crawl through and clean out the sediment traps in the channel floor. After falling steeply for the first few kilometers, the aqueduct channel leveled out with a subsequent average gradient of only 0.15%. In several places, long lines of arcades were constructed to maintain the gradient over valleys. Here, in Mohamedia, the arcades parallel the modern highway. As you can see, the piers of the arcade were constructed from large stone blocks topped by a masonry channel. Water took about a day and a half to flow from one end of the aqueduct to the other. On the outskirts of Carthage, the aqueduct flowed into the massive Lamalga cisterns. There were originally 24 chambers. To judge from the surviving examples, each was a vault 95 meters long and 12 and a half meters wide. Much of the water stored here was eventually channeled to the Antonine Baths, the aqueduct's final destination. Carthage seems to have had a water supply adequate for the needs of its residents before the aqueduct was built. It was probably the construction of the Antonine Baths, the largest anywhere outside Rome, that made the Zagwan aqueduct necessary. The superstructure of the Antonine Baths is long gone, destroyed by medieval earthquakes and stone robbers, but the basement remains intact enough to provide a sense of the vast halls in which the water of the Zagwan Springs finally returned to the sun. If you're interested in visiting the Roman ruins of Tunisia and other historic destinations with me, check out the Toldenstone Trips page, linked on screen and in the description.